What's up guys, Graham here, bringing you a little bit of the information provided by the PvP livestream that Tryon did for Rift 3.0 PvP and I'm wanting to give you guys my thoughts on everything because I know a lot of you have already seen the changes but you may wonder what Grim has to say about them. First off, these changes have me a little bit concerned because I have always loved Rift PvP. I've played so many other games. I've played Star Wars, The Old Republic, I've played Dark Age of Camelot, Ultima Online, EverQuest, uh, Neverwinter. I mean, I, I could go on and on about all of the games that I've played and none of them has had the PvP that Rift provides for us, On in my opinion except for the prime days of Dark Age of Camelot. That was the best PvP I've ever seen, but those days are long gone, and Rift is providing the best PvP currently that I've seen. I've played all these other games, and Rift is a game of choice for me, but these changes have me concerned. There's a lot of things that are going to be happening that could possibly take out a lot of the excitement that I normally have for PvP and the progression of PvP. So let's go over some of these changes and I'll let you know what my thoughts are as we go along. Now what I have up on screen right now is a forum post by Ocho basically going over a lot of the things that they talked about in the PvP live stream. And first on the list there you see that he says gear is being unified. So what that means is that PvP gear and PvE gear, there will be no difference. Basically, you will no longer be buying PvP gear at all. You will be buying PvE gear, but it will apply to PvP. So whenever you do an expert dungeon or anything like that, and you get a nice piece of blue gear or whatever drops there, that gear is... If it's decent for PvE, then it's probably going to be decent for PvP. You're going to be able to take that same gear and go into a war front and do well, possibly. Of course, there is a lot of skill thrown in there, but gear is a big factor. That is no doubt whatsoever. So, you can get really, really good PvE gear, such as if you're a raider, and take that gear into PvP and have the best PvP gear on the battlefield at that current time. And that has me concerned for several different reasons. Uh, the power of it may not be too much of a factor because it's going to be bolstered in a certain way, which I'll go over just shortly. But for one, I am somebody that I want the best gear possible. And... It looks like I'm going to have to raid in order to get that. And that really sucks because I don't I don't want to spend my time raiding. I want to be fighting players. That's what I enjoy doing. And yes, you will be able to get currency that will buy the gear through PvP. But it's not going to be that top gear that raiders are going to get. Yes, am I, go am I going to be able to get the most powerful gear in pvp through just pvp yes that is basically what they're saying but that's only because of the bolstering so if i get some gear that puts me on this level here it's going to not be as strong as the raid gear but the raid gear is going to be brought down to my level kind of thing so I don't know. Uh, it it doesn't give the satisfaction that I would like to have if I'm looking for the best gear. Because I know these other guys are getting the best gear even though it's not being as powerful in PvP. It takes away the satisfaction. That's what I'm trying to say. Number two is that I like my gear being the Myrmidon, you know, top of the line gear. Whenever people look at it, they go, man, that is some awesome gear right there. I love it, man. I mean, I, I just love the, I put in all this effort to get this gear 
and now I get to show it off. Even though I've got it kind of transmogged where you're seeing the, the gear that you see on my intros and stuff like that. But still, whenever people open up my character profile, they mouse over all my gear and they go, man, that is some amazing stuff right there. I can't have that anymore if I'm just PvPing. I've got to go raid. I've got to get the top raid gear in order to have any of that kind of reaction from people anymore. And it takes away so much more of the satisfaction that I was just talking about. Alright, the ranting on gear is over now, but there is possibly a really good side to this. Tron has been very open saying that they wish that PvPers would do more PvE. And PvEers would give PvP more of a try. They wanted that to happen, but they can't really force us to do it normally. And so what this is doing is it's bridging that gap to where PvPers such as me can go over into PvE and possibly enjoy it. Because people ask me all the time, why don't you do some PvE content on your channel? Well, it's... One of the big reasons is because I don't have the top gear in PvE and I don't have the time to get it. Because I put so much time into PvP, I don't have the time to get the top PvE gear as well. And I'm somebody that I've got to perform at the top level. I've got to have the best gear. I've got to perform skill-wise at the best that I can do. And... Whenever I go into a warfront, if I'm not killing at least a 10 to 1 ratio to death, then I am not happy. I am not happy with how things are going. I want to be at the top of the line. I want to be murdering everybody and everybody really having a hard time ever bringing me down. That's what makes me happy. That's what I enjoy in my skill set, basically. I want to be the best or at least perform like I could be the best. So for me to go over into PvE and have terrible gear, that's that's not something I want to do. I do not find that fun. And for me to know that I'll never have the top PvE gear because I spend too much time PvPing, that's that makes me not even want to try it. Well, what the, what they're doing now is with the gear being unified, I might possibly be able to go over to the PvE and get the best gear. Who knows? I might enjoy it. I don't know. I just know I like the PvP and I'm not sure I want to bridge that gap. Alright, as you can see on the second point here, we've got Valor and Vengeance are no longer going to exist in 3.0. And basically what that is going to happen with is it's going to change those two stats into Spell Power, Attack Power, and Endurance. So they're getting converted into stats that can apply to both PvP and PvE. And no longer is there going to be PvE, uh, PvP only stats. So, yeah, we're going to be having some hit onto our gear that's a lot more than we're used to in PvP. Usually hit is not something that we even care about in PvP, but now we're going to have it. People are saying on the test servers that they're running around with 700 hit or more, and yeah, it's we're going to be able to hit some monsters, I guess. All right, the next point here we got is bolstering. That is going to be such a big deal coming up. And a lot of people aren't understanding what they're meaning about the top-down uh, version of bolstering that's going to be happening. But basically what's going to happen is, say you PvP all the time and you got the best gear that the PvP... Uh, well, you're, it's going to be a currency that you can get that you can buy the gear or whatever on vendors. And you're going to get the best gear you can through the vendors. All right. So you've got this top of the line gear for what you can buy through just PVPing. Well, then somebody comes into that warfront and they've got the top tier raid gear. These guys are decked out. They're running around with this crazy looking armor and got this wicked sword and they're about to hammer down on you and there's nothing you can do about it well no that's not going to happen what they're saying is 
there is going to be basically a cap on the P the PVP power, so to say. So that person with raid gear, his gear is going to be bolstered down to where he's on the same level as the top PVP gear that you can get, so to say. There's not really PVP gear, but if you PVP all the time, there's going to be a top level of gear that you're going to be able to get. And this raid gear is going to be brought down to that level. So people aren't going to run around with this awesome raid gear and just be one shotting everybody that's not going to happen and that has been a big concern for everybody is they're thinking that they just can't get the best gear but actually they can it's just there isn't going to be too much satisfaction with getting the best uh gear that only pvping is going to allow Another thing is that the prestige is going to be absolutely meaningless. Here, us PvPers have always worked hard at getting our prestige up so that we can get that next level of PvP gear. We're always wanting to progress, so man, hammering through those prestige levels was always a big concern and always part of our fun for a lot of us. Me, I love going through the prestige ranks and once you hit that rank 80 or rank 90 or whatever and then you can get the next level gear, that was so much satisfaction to me. And now prestige is gonna mean nothing. Basically, it's gonna be titles and that's it. Whenever you hit the next tier of Prestige, it's going to give you a new title, and that's all that it's going to matter. There is nothing else that's going to be interesting with Prestige. So, that is very disheartening to me. Moving on, we see that Conquest is still going to be around. Of course, Conquest has always been one of the biggest things in PvP that they've ever pushed. So, naturally, it's going to stay around, but it is going to be disabled for a little while until they get enough level 65s to actually run the Conquest pretty consistently. So, it's going to be disabled for probably a month or so, and that's going to be... Uh, a really sucky thing because I like going into conquest. I like my war fronts, but I also like my conquest. I enjoy both of them and it's going to be gone for a while. They may activate it earlier than a month, but you know, they're basically saying it's going to be disabled for a little while after launch of 3.0. Uh, another thing dealing with conquest is conquest power will be gone absolutely gone so you guys don't have to worry about doing a conquest once a week or whatever it's going to be whenever you want to do it and that's it so yeah all you conquest freaks it's going to be disabled for a little while now to go back on whenever I said that the gear will be unified, I wanted to show you guys a screenshot that was provided on riftgreat.com. They basically show the gear that you're used to seeing right now, such as the normal Myrmidon gear, and it has been modified over to where you can see that there is no vengeance or valor on the gear, and it's all been replaced with spell power, attack power, and endurance, and some hit. So that's the way things are going to go. The You can see that not everything has been changed over completely. They're still working on it. As you can see, the weapon at the bottom left, the Myrmidon's Charge Mace, the rune on it still has Vengeance there, but that's going to be changed. So it's not going to be the same way anymore. And even expanding on that rune there that you see, the Vengeful rune, that you're used to getting from depleted supply crates there are going to be another version of the depleted supply crates but since gear is unified it's going to be for everybody so you're basically going to be getting uh pve friendly runes out of it and it's going to apply to pvp as well some of the good news is that they have said that a new Warfront is coming in the expansion, so we can look forward to that. And for those of you that are worried that it's going to be an underwater Warfront, no, it is not going to be an underwater Warfront. They have specifically said it is not going to be. And they're also discussing enabling a ranked Black Garden for 3v3, so... 
we're possibly going to see some godlike arenas happening in the 3v3 and 5v5 ranked maps, but they're going to have to add some kind of spectator mode. That would be really cool to be able to watch the matches and stuff like that, but currently it's just one team against another and there is no rewards, so most people have no interest in doing ranked black gardens and there will never be rewards in the ranked matches like that they have specifically said there would never be any rewards to it because i don't know if you guys are aware but in games like wow that have arenas yes the arenas are a big highlight point for them but it's also a big problem for games like that. And the developers of WoW have voiced in the past that it kind of sucks to have Arena be such a big highlight point, but really not many of the players play Arena compared to what goes into Battlegrounds. So whenever you got these few people doing the Arenas, and they're the ones that get all of the spotlight so the developers have to tweak all the pvp changes around arena and not around battlegrounds that do that holds most of the pvp players they really don't like that and i think tron is very aware of that as well so they have no intention of ever doing arenas as they know the headache it's been for companies like Blizzard and they don't wish to follow in those footsteps. So, yeah. No arenas coming up anytime soon, guys. Some other changes coming up is the matchmaking improvements. They have already done some adjusting, but they're going to be doing even more. Now, this kind of uh, goes into a funny forum post that they did. In that the it, they called it the curse of Fernan, and Fernan is a PVPer that many of you may know if you PVP very much, but he's a warrior, and the guy is just notorious for never winning a warfront for the most part. If you ever get put on his team, you know you're going to lose. It's just that way, and he's not a bad player by any stretch of it, but he is cursed and nobody knew why the guy lost all the time but then they started questioning it and daglar actually responded with uh an answer he said that the matchmaking system was basically pairing fernand up with a lot of weak players because his damage was so high and that was not supposed to be something that was in the system. They wanted it to be more of a win-loss kind of thing. In that if you win a bunch of matches, then you get put with people that are losing a lot of matches. And that will make it to where they have a chance of winning. And that kind of thing. But in the past, it was damage that was a big deciding factor. So if you went in and did a bunch of damage, but yet still lost all the time, then you would continue to be put with losing players because they weren't doing much damage and they were losing the matches. So you would continue to lose. Well, they changed that. They went ahead and took out the damage being a waiting factor in that. So... Yeah, those of you that are running around with your necro specs and never winning, yeah, now you can actually win. An interesting change that I have been waiting on forever is the balancing of healers and DPS. I've always said that there needed to be some kind of balancing for us to get 15 players and none of them to be healers and nobody's willing to switch to healer and then the other team have five healers was just insane to me i cannot believe this went on for so long well they're finally changing that to where there's going to be some balance now in the past the suggestions that i gave was that they needed to lock in healers so otherwise whenever you go into a warfront as a specific spec they needed to lock you into that spec that way that if you queue up as a DPS or take for example as a healer and then you go into the warfront and there's only one more healer in a 15 man warfront 
and you switch over to DPS, you completely cripple your team because that second heal is was so important and you just took it away from your team. Well, they needed to have you locked into it. That way that you can heal your team and be an asset and not be a hindrance. Well, they've done it a little bit different on their solution here. They've decided that if you are normally queuing up as a healer, they are going to count you as a healer and try to get a ratio of DPS compared to healer players. So if you play DPS all the time, yes, you can switch over to heals in that warfront if you feel like it's needed, such as one of the uh, holding the fang kind of warfronts where you need extra healing instead of extra DPS. That may be what you're going to want to do and you're going to be able to do it, but they're going to balance it to where healers will be more in ratio with DPS and that is a great change right there. Moving on to the last points here, as you can see it says no new PvP quests on launch of the expansion. So we're going to be doing the same Tempest Bay quests that we're used to doing. Nothing new, it's just going to be tweaked a little bit with the rewards to where it's going to give us uh, the rewards that will allow us to buy the PvE gear which is going to apply to PvP as well. So. Yeah, everybody's going to be getting the same gear and the rewards and currencies are going to be much the same. So, as you can see on the second point, it says PvP looting will not be automatic, so you will no longer have to loot corpses. I'm not too sure where they're going with that. Are they meaning automatic and they accidentally threw in not in there because... If it's not automatic, you would still have to loot corpses. I'm not too sure where they went with that on riftgrate.com, but hopefully it means that it's automatic loot. Hopefully. Because taking away the little bit of money we earn through PvP would suck. Alright, and also the last point is that Sea Stone will not become a PvE shard, so you guys don't have to worry about everything being care bared for you, but... I don't know. The world PvP in Sea Stone really is non existent anyway. So anything that Sea Stone does is just a hindrance, it seems. They they make it to where you can't group up with people of the opposite faction and all that and it just makes it to where it's more of a hindrance to be on that server than anything. I love to be on Sea Stone. I would love to take part in world PvP and all that, but it's just not an option whenever I'm trying to group up with many of the viewers that I have. And many of them are on opposite factions. So, yeah, no sea stone for me in the near future. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed me going over some of the changes. There are a lot of other changes, such as the mastery system that's coming in and all of that. And I'll possibly do a video on all of that if you want me to. But really, I wanted to make sure that I made a video on the changes in PvP because that's what concerns me the most. And it may concern you guys the most since you're my viewers and you know this is mainly a PvP channel. So... As usual guys, my name is Grim and I will see you next time.